Welcome to the ACS Technical Advisory Board podcast series, where we talk all things tech including data, cyber, AI, blockchain, and Internet of Things. Meet your host, Dr. David Cook, Vice President of the Australian Computer Society's Technical Boards. David is a technology advocate dedicated to advances and progression of computing and human-computer interaction. In today's episode, David will be talking with ACS Data Sharing Committee Chair, Dr. Graham Port. Join us as we discuss the challenges in data sharing, the differences in sharing data across states and even countries, and the state of data sharing in the future. Graham Port is an expert in the highly challenging area of sharing data in the area of child protection and child protection decision making. Graham is an innovator and he's a leader Uh, in enterprise software product development and data architecture and has been doing that for over 30 years. He works with government and industry to get the best results out of government information sharing projects. He is the chair of the ACS National Data Sharing Committee. Graham Port, welcome to the podcast. David, thank you very much indeed. Some people say that uh, data sharing is the most important challenge for the digital economy. Are they right? Um, what, what's so challenging about data sharing? David, I think the biggest challenge about data sharing is it's really got a tension between da- getting data insights and privacy of data. We're all very concerned about the privacy of our data. We don't want our data overshared. But without some degree of sharing, the insights become very narrow, very, very sort of siloed insights that can be obtained. And it's that tension, getting both sides right, which is the real challenge for us. Now, you work in one of the most important areas in data sharing, working in child protection. What's your biggest challenge? Well, in the first place with child protection, you're really looking at on both of those dimensions of privacy and insights, pretty much working at the max. It's extremely sensitive data. It's data about children, about their their well-being, their harm. There's very uh, concern about information about that what actually happened and ultimately the perpetrators of that information. To get insights though, there needs to be sharing about that information and and that sharing is incredibly valuable because it can lead to much better outcomes. I've been operating at the, both the national level and the state level of these functions. At the national level, it was more about sharing information about that certain people were involved in the child protection space so that child protection workers in one jurisdiction could know that if somebody they were dealing with had some activity in the child protection space interstate, and then they could make inquiries to that state about what they needed to know about the person, which would be a direct request for information on an interstate basis. For the state-based systems, we were looking at more the sharing of data between different departments. So children, caseworkers working in child protection, when they they had a child who was at risk, they could obtain information from other departments so they got a more holistic view of that child, their immediate family, and their extended family across a wide range of government department, departmental information. Now, I'm aware that, you know, whilst in New South Wales, uh, data sharing is rapidly advancing, there's all sorts of new elements which are being evolved, privacy enhancing technologies and so on. We're getting, we're really making great headway. But it's, it's not an even platform when I look at it across Australia. Different states have different levels of traction. You, you've had some experience, I think, with Victoria and Northern Territory. What does that look like? Yeah, there are definitely differences between the states. Um, in many cases, that's to do with the political will to take on this challenge. Uh, in some jurisdictions, there doesn't seem to be the, the passion to, to enable and the, 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 both people within that government and for intergovernment exchange as much as other states. But there are some, some really strong examples. In Victoria, it was much more of a, 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 a sharing based around um, trying to get a, a broader view of, a, of children as part of a, an overall program to get an understanding of a child's um, a whole journey through um, from uh, maternal and child care through kindergarten and education and child protection. In the Northern Territory, it was a response to findings from the Royal Commission about um, the execution of, of and support for for, uh, for for children there, and the and the strong message that came from the Royal Commission was that there was not enough sharing between departments about the knowledge about a child and their family for delivery of quality service 
in relation to child protection in that state. Now, I wonder, is there a bit of a mobility problem here in terms of data sharing? How does it work when someone moves from one state to another? Because we know that people in Australia like to move about. Yeah. So this issue of mobility really flows from the fact that in terms of the responsibilities of, of the levels of government, child protection is a state level responsibility. So it's, each state has got its own child protection system. But if people move around the country, which of course they, they love to do, um, that data doesn't flow with them. And so specific child sharing mechanisms need to be put in between states so that so that child protection workers in one state can have a, more of a national understanding of the background about that child. Now, I'm just thinking in terms of, say, internationally, um, how, how does Australia compare with the rest of the world in terms of data sharing? What, what, are, are, we, are we doing okay? Where do we sit? Listen, overall, Australia's doing some very good work. Uh, both in terms of the development of systems locally and their uh, involvement with international standards bodies, in terms of establishing a uniform national, in fact, worldwide standards-based approach to, to, uh, to data sharing. That said, it, it's still a bit patchy. Some states are better than others. And, and as with ACS, we see one of our responsibilities is to ensure that that knowledge from one area is properly disseminated to other states, both to to train our members and, and, and to influence um, government and industry in terms of better and more robust job, uh, data sharing. So with my crystal ball, I'm always interested to know what it looks like in the future. How does it look like in terms of your vision for the future? What does data sharing look like in, say, 2030? Yeah. What's changed? Are any things any better? Yeah. Well, we certainly hope things will change. Um, the things that we'd like to see is the more sharing both within organ within governments at state and federal levels and between governments as long as that the safety of the, the data sharing is is absolutely maintained underlying that there's there's changes and development needs to do to uh, increase in terms of the understanding of the frameworks how to set up safe projects for data sharing covering the projects and the people and the settings of the technology and the outputs but also the technology that's used to support those projects. And there's rapid advances, often quite advanced cryptographic type techniques that are enabling more and more powerful ways of doing data sharing safely. Graham, thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you, David. To find out more about how the ACS is powering Australia's technology brilliance, visit us at our website, Facebook or LinkedIn. Want to get involved with the ACS technical boards? Email us at tab at acs.org.au and tell us a bit about yourself. Join us for more thought leadership, ideas and information through our other podcasts on the ACS YouTube, Facebook or on LinkedIn.